Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the online book club that I host every Saturday. My name is Gustavo Tolosa, and I'm a plant-based webinar host and producer, and I love, love, love to cook, and I also am a concert pianist. So sometimes, but not today, I play a little bit of piano for you. Sometimes when I do a cooking demo, I also play some music for you. And um, today we have a very special guest. Before we get started, I have a few announcements. And today's special guest is the one and only Chef AJ. And I promise you this is going to be an awesome, awesome session. It's a little sad that we are finishing this uh, uh, session of, of the book club where we have read the book, Own Your Health, which was truly, truly amazing and practical and packed with information. And uh, we will move on to another book in April. So one of my announcements is that March will be a, a month off for me because I am preparing a concert which will be streamed live and I will let you know later on by email uh, when that will be and you're, you're most welcome to attend. And also I will be doing more Facebook lives and I will be doing a, what I eat in a day as well and i will also be doing a cooking live with gustavo which is something that many of you liked and you asked me to do another so uh that's going to be uh, coming up in march that's why march is already full for me <laughs> and um we'll get started in april so what uh, the plan is for today is that Chef AJ has chosen her three favorite recipes and uh, from the book. So I, th I assume that most of you, if not all of you, have the book on your health. So you have the recipes and you will see the um, creator of the recipes herself make the recipes today and um, i am very very grateful because i know how busy she is okay hi oh hello hello <laughs> how are you i am doing great this is just like old times i know you're you're the webinar wizard thank you so much for having me it's so great I, to see you well i it's such a pleasure i Aww. I feel like I feel like I'm talking here to like a, a, a Hollywood star. You're oh, all yeah. over internet. Uh, just... You're the YouTube queen. Goodness. Well, I, I'm I'm trying to be the Don King of vegan because I want to really start promoting other people other than myself because you know somebody's got to fill the shoes of all the big guys like Dr. McDougal and Esselstyn and Campbell when they retire. So I'm looking for all the people that are doing great things in the world like you. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh. <laughs> that I missed that beautiful. Oh. How is she doing? She's good. She misses you. And guys, before you say, I can't believe she's going to cook if she's touching a dog. Let me say a couple things. First of all, you're not eating the food. Second of all, I'll wash my hands. Third of all, I interviewed a gastroenterologist yesterday that said having pets is one of the best things you can do for your health because it diversifies your microbiome especially when you let them kiss you on the mouth so take it from a vegan medical gastroenterologist wow okay wonderful well bailey she is as cute as ever thank you she just isn't that cute she just kind of sits here like this okay washing hands, Wash hands. And okay. right now i can still hear you but I oh. am washing my, see guys, and I'm using soap and I'm doing it for at least 30 seconds. Like they say, they say you're supposed to sing happy birthday when you wash your hands. And that's about how long you have to wash them for. 
Well, I love your new, I love your new kitchen. Your new oh, house. I love it too. As, as I always tell people, we didn't buy a house, we bought a kitchen and the house was attached. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. AJ, tell yeah. us, a, tell us a, just a little bit about this, this gigantic project that you have embarked into that because you're, you're um, broadcasting three times a day? Or no, no, days? not anymore. That was okay. So I didn't know I'm not a tech wizard like you. So when I first when the pandemic first started, which I believe like was around March 20th, I wanted to go live to my private group. And I was using this new technology called Restream and ended up going everywhere, YouTube, Facebook, and people, a lot of people were watching at the time. And I mean, we would get sometimes 500 to 1000 people at the beginning of the pandemic, because they just wanted some sense of connection. And so people, I, I, I got tired of broadcasting by myself because it's kind of boring. And so I would ask a few friends to come on, like doctors at True North. And then it just all of a sudden, like, I, I mean, at one point I had like 200 people writing me, can I be on your show? It wasn't even a show. So now it's a show. It's going into its second season on March 21st. We're going to kick off with Dr. Lyle and Dr. Goldhammer. On March 20th, it's the last episode of the first season with Dr. Joel Furman because he's had the most views. And then on my birthday, March 22nd, Dr. John McDougal. It's been amazing, Gustavo, because like so many people that I met, like you introduced me to Dr. Poyman. And then I had another doctor from uh, where you live in South America. Argentina. Um, Argentina, right. Sorry. His, um, what's his name now? Shoot. But, but, but other people referred other people. And these are people that even if there wasn't a pandemic and I was traveling full time, I would not be able to meet this many people that I've met. And so it's been a lot of fun. It is. It's the it's the magic of technology. It's yeah, just it's it's when, great when it works. <laughs> there are times. Yeah, that, when it works, it, exactly. Well, tell us what are you gonna what are you what have you planned today? Yeah. So so thank you so much for doing a book club on on. You know, I, I really say it's, it's really Glenn's book. It's my recipes, but own your health and 75 delicious recipes from me. And then to make it, I like always over 100 from the contributors. So I'm going to be doing four of my favorite recipes from this book. I was going to do five, but I ended up doing a shoot for my weight loss Wednesday it, it, it a weekly show yesterday because I wanted to do my favorite recipes. And by favorite, I mean the ones that I make over and over. I really try very hard not to put a recipe in a book that I don't really like because that wouldn't make sense. But a lot of times when you ask chefs what their favorite recipes are, I've heard them say, oh, but that's like telling you my favorite kid. And it's like everybody knows your parents all had a favorite kid. Hopefully it was you. But so we do have favorite recipes. And by favorite, they're usually the ones that are not just delicious and nutritious, but that you make over and over. So I'm kind of going to show you like a breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert kind of thing that these are the ones I literally, I'm not kidding you when I tell you I make these every week and sometimes more than once a week. And so what I'm going to be making is for the breakfast, I'm going to be making the easy overnight oats. For the lunch, I'm not going to make the whole lunch, but I'm going to make my favorite salad dressing, the lemon poppy seed dressing, which I actually do have for lunch every single day on my salad. For dinner, the zucchini saute. And for dessert or beverage, the date shake. But I'm going to show you guys a variation of the date shake that I haven't released yet because Glenn was really rushing me to get this book out. And I had so many other recipes that were in production or testing. That's why I'm doing these Chibo classes. But this variation, if he does decide to up, what's not upgrade, what's that word? Or you, Charles, what's New that edition, word? Right New edition. Place. He'll oh. put this variation in. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make some plant milk because two of the recipes call for them. Now, now, I'm going to be using the Nutra Milk Machine. You guys do not have to buy this machine. But if you're interested, I have a $50 coupon code. But what's so cool about this machine is that it's also a food processor, a blender, an ice cream machine. And I love it, uh, especially since I learned from so many of the doctors that there's a, an ingredient in plant milk called emulsifiers that I wasn't aware of that's really bad for our health, especially our gut. And also, it ends up over time to be cheaper to make your own. So over here, I have this machine. And yes, you can do it in the blender uh, if you have one. The thing is, what's kind of cool about this machine is you don't have to do any soaking or straining. So I'm going to be making walnut milk. And the reason is, is because walnuts are the highest in omega-3 fatty acids, those good fats that we need. So if I'm going to drink something, why not make it the healthiest that we can? And there's this whole, I'm sure you guys know about the almond controversy that it takes more water to grow almonds. And so anyway, I just use uh, walnuts. So I'm just putting in a couple walnuts. And what's nice about making plant milk yourself is you can customize how high the fat's going to be by how much water you use. So I could use as little as four cups if I wanted to make it really rich. I could use eight cups if I wanted it more watery. 
I'm splitting the difference and I'm using six cups. Oops, but before I put the water in, this is actually gonna take all of three minutes, but before I put the water in, I've gotta just make this nuts into a nut butter. And that takes exactly a minute. So I do that simply by pushing this but butter button. Now 16 is way too long. 16 is what you use for almonds, but walnuts are nice and soft like cashews. And so then I just that. do a little dance everybody get up and dance you know in the middle of the thing ah rotator cuff aj yeah are you, are you planning are you planning any new books or um on i have idea i always have book ideas and i have kind of two in my mind right now what i really need to do is well, what glenn and i are working on the 10th anniversary edition of unprocess which, which is going to have upgraded information and photos. So that's not really a new book, but it is kind of a new book. And I still have to get my ebook, A Date with Dessert, into print form with all the new recipes. So yeah, that's, yes. Okay. You know, you know, the writing of a book is, <laughs> that's glad. He's a much better at it. It's, it requires a lot of sitting down. You know, I like it, things you can do standing up. Like it, it, is, uh, it is quite a job, I mean, yep. to, to write a book. My okay, so Okay. So that was exactly one minute. And what's kind of cool about this machine is if you have a family that eats a lot of nut butters, this is so much cheaper than uh, buying them. Why do I always have trouble with this, Charles? I don't want people to think it's the machine. It's me. It's my, it's my weak little, see, Charles got it right off. It's my weak little hands. But if you look down, you can see that what I've created was walnut butter. So if you eat nut butter, boom. But what we're going to do is we're going to add the water to it. And then it's going to be another minute for processing. But I think this is pretty quick for making milk, if you ask me. Oh, I was pushing it the wrong way. That's why it wouldn't release. And then I push what's called the mix button for one minute. So now all I do is push the dispense button. And voila. What a wonderful machine that is. Wow. It, it really is. It's, it's, uh, the people that have bought it, I know it's expensive. Um, you know, you can, depending if you get the extra bowl, it would be $4.99 with the $50 off for $50. But when you think about all that it replaces and not having to keep buying boxes of plant milk, it might be something that, especially somebody that has a family, you know, would consider. I know my friend Sharon McRae has three kids and they eat, you know, one of her son eats so much nut butter, this machine for her has probably already paid for itself. And, and what's nice about it, it has very little waste. Uh, there are some plant milk machines that people use where they're throwing away a lot of it, like the pulp, which is where all the fiber and nutrients are. So now we have our plant milk made, which we're going to use right away in the first recipe which is Charles's favorite recipe. And it must be a lot of people's favorite recipe, and I'll tell you why. When I did my 200th episode of broadcast for Weight Loss Wednesday, I had this contest, and the people had to send some photos in of them making their favorite recipe from Own Your Health. And I think more people made the date shake than any other recipe. But I'm forgetting one ingredient, which is very important to a date shake, well, I haven't made this date shake, so now I'm going to make it. Well, not only am I going to make the date shake, but I'm going to make the very the the variation, which I call okay. guilt-free frappuccino, because this is going to taste like those ice blended mocha drinks that you get at Starbucks uh -huh. or at uh, Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. So, okay. so it's it starts with a cup of plant milk, your choice. What I like about the blend tech is I can see the side for measuring, which is nice. Now, if you, ha if you don't have a high-powered blender, you might want to soak your dates in advance. And so we're going to be using the Medjool for this, four of them. These are kind of hard. I probably should have soaked them. But so we're going to be putting four dates in. And here's a little trick that you guys might like. You know, there's not... I don't. I, have you guys ever met anybody that honestly ate 30 different breakfasts every day and 30 different lunches every day, 30 different dinners, 90 different meals a month? Most people eat the same thing over and over, whether it's healthy or not. And they say it's anywhere between five and 10 dishes. 
So since I know Charles would have one of these every day, because these cost $10 at the store, by the way. Date shakes are very popular in the Coachella Valley, the Palm Springs area where I now live. And when and he was doing that, and, and I said, that's like, that's some, too much. So I tasted it, and I said, I can replicate this, and I did. And I'm proud of this recipe, but since we make it all the time, I pre-measure the spices in advance, just like I do for my red lentil chili. So these jars, which you get when you buy any spices, or you can buy 69 cents at Bed Bath & Beyond, I put them in the dishwasher, and then uh, when it's empty, so, so you'll see that I have 12 of them right here. So far, only one of them has been used. And this way, I don't have to do it every time. And then when I get to the 11th one, then I'll start measuring again. So this makes it really, really easy because then you have your jars and you just throw everything in the blender. And the only variation that I'm doing for you guys to make it different is I'm putting in two tablespoons of a coffee substitute. This is called Dandy Blend. And this makes it taste like those drinks, I'm not kidding, from Starbucks and coffee bean and tea leaf. It just takes it to another level. Now, Dandy Blend, they, it says that it's, it's definitely caffeine free. It says that it's gluten free, yet it's made from barley. How that works, I don't know. I wrote the company, they swear, they tested it. But if you have a, you know, a sensitivity to gluten, then maybe there are other coffee substitutes that don't have gluten. But the flavor of this is unbelievable. So it might be a little bit noisy for a minute while I blend. There's gonna be more ingredients, by the way. I'm gonna add my bananas. I always keep lots of bananas in the freezer. I, I like to use Ziploc bags so I can write the date that I put them in there. This was 127. Always make sure you peel your bananas before you put them in the freezer, you'll never get the peel off. Always have them as ripe as possible because that's your sweetener. Of course, there's some dates in here too. So now I'm gonna add my vanillas. This smells so good. It's like coffee ice cream, guys. If you were somebody that liked coffee back in the day or even now, I think you'll love this. So I'm gonna blend again. Okay, so I can see people asking, but those are, that recipe is in the book. So. Oh, it's definitely in the book. I, I, I'm only doing yeah. recipes from the book. Yeah, it's, right. called, it's called Desert Date Shake. And there's also a recipe at the back of the book, at the contributor section from Zell Allen, where one time she was at my house a couple years ago and she tasted this and she used this as a sauce for a baked apple that's incredible. So now I'm gonna add ice. Now you don't have to add ice. But what ice does to any kind of smoothie or milkshake is it just kind of fluffs it up more. So I learned this from Dr. Barbara Rolls on the Truth About Weight Loss Summit. Is it, 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 it's, it's, it's not that it lowers the calories, but it increases the volume. So you get fuller more. But I like it because it makes it more thick and creamy like ice cream. And then that way it'll, it'll stretch it out so that we can get two servings out of this for me and Charles. But here's the thing. Anytime you're adding ice, you got to add it at the end after everything's set. If you add it at the beginning, it completely liquefies and it won't work. So, you know, how, how much you add is up to you, depending on whether or not you have a high powered blender. But I like it really, really thick. Do you like it thick, Charles, or thin? He likes it thick. Okay. I don't know if you can see how thick that is. Look at that. Now that is a thick coffee milkshake. Let me get a, it's so thick. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. So, like but you don't have to do that. If you like it more liquidy, that's fine. He likes it thick, but you see it's more like an ice cream texture. And whenever, when I did have sugar, even mm. when, I can't remember, it's been so long since dairy, but I used to go to this restaurant, Follow Your Heart, that was vegan, and I'd always get a coffee milkshake. Yeah. Look at that, guys. Oh, oh this is so good. I'm not kidding. Oh, the, only reason, the only reason Charles agreed to do the filming is because he was getting a <laughs> shake out of it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So then a pretty straw. 
and look at that. I call it the guilt-free, a guilt-free frappuccino. And wow. that's all from the desert date shake. Now, there's something else I'm gonna do because I'm I'm working right now and I'm also full. I'm not gonna drink this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this to popsicles. Right now it's too thick to pour, but as soon as it, it melts a little bit, I'm going to use this little mold. And if it melts in the time that we're doing this broadcast, I'll show you how to do it. But basically, I just pour it in here. I stick the stick on. And then sometimes you're too full, say, for example, to have a whole date shake. Uh -huh. So so you might have a popsicle made out of it. So right. look at how I mean, beautiful. The, look, look at these. Oh, wow. Don't so e each, each recipe makes 10 popsicles. And so then... Uh -oh. It, you know they're like 50 calories each, and they're they're so so good. And so we'll, wanted, we'll if you wanted it more watery, would you just add water or some other? You no, know, if you wanted it more watery, just don't add the ice. That's it. The okay. ice is what did this. So don't add the ice. So okay. now what I need to do, I think I need to get the other blender. So I'm gonna do that right now. I should have put it out. So excuse me for one moment while I get because I want to go to to a, a salad dressing now. Just the so rest in the book mention anything about oats or chia seeds? Yes, the recipe has both oats and chia seeds, and that's a great question. The reason is, and that I worked a lot on this recipe because I had the flavor done right away after tasting the one from the uh, place that Charles used to get it, because they they have to they had to disclose the ingredients. They uh -huh. didn't have to disclose the amount, but the, the amount. secret secret ingredient really is is the um, is the vanilla powder. This is one recipe that if you if you try to go cheap and not get the vanilla powder, you really won't. It won't be as good. So the purpose of the chia seeds is it acts as a thickener, and so do the oats. It it just it it does something to give it more of an ice cream texture. So that's why it's in there. Yeah, I mean, you know, just please this recipe. If you follow it exactly, you won't be disappointed. Vanilla extract that is not vanilla powder, I would rather have you almost omit it then. But if you omit it, you're gonna taste banana. And the thing is you don't wanna taste banana in this. The banana is being used as a sweetener so that we don't do all dates. That's the reason. And also it's a thickener. So my very favorite salad dressing from the book and in life is called the lemon poppy seed dressing. I think it has like five ingredients. It is so easy to make, and I really do eat it every day on my large salad that I have usually at lunch. Since I never do one recipe uh, in general, I make a four, a times two or a times four batch. And so I pre-measured out my lemon juice and my water in advance because I did soak the dates only because the dates that I had, I, I don't want to waste the expensive majul for the dressing. I use those for the shakes. Uh, they were hard. So I had them in here soaking. So it, it's a double recipe. And all I've added so far were the lemon juice, the water, and the dates. And then we have our mustard, which I'm doubling the recipe. That's why it's more. And you can see that it's a little bit shy. So there's still some in here. So what I do is I never waste. I just pour some of the liquid in my mustard jar. I love this West Gray, not just because it's salt-free, but because it's relatively mild, I've never been a person that liked mustard. I've never liked yellow mustard. I've never liked Dijon, just too, I don't know, vinegary. But this is a nice flavor in there. Uh, this is a salt-free, and they make one that's not salt-free, but it's it's like a stone ground and it's not, not too sharp. So we got that in there. And then I'm going to blend this before I add the seeds, because if I blend the seeds, you won't see the pretty seeds. I mean, they will blend, but not so much. So I'm going to blend this up. So again, being used as a thickener so that the dressing sticks to the lettuce a little better. And the poppy seeds are because it's called lemon poppy seed dressing. And if you didn't add the mustard, that would be fine. It would be much sweeter. And that's another recipe in the book called lemonade dressing. Now, if you know me at all, you know I'm a huge fan of the California balsamic vinegars. And they come in these bottles, different size bottles, one square, one's not square. And I don't throw these away or recycle them after I enjoy them, I put them in the dishwasher so the label comes off, and then I use them as bottles to house my dressing, and this way I can also give it as gifts because I have so many of these bottles. Now you can see when I'm pouring, it's really liquidy, but that's because the chia seeds take a little bit of time to thicken it. 
if you want it less thick, add less chia seeds or none at all. If you want it thicker, add a little bit more. You don't want it so thick, though, that it doesn't come out of the bottle. Someone is asking if you ever make this dressing without the dates or do you always put the dates? Oh, gosh, I've never made it without the dates. I think it would. I okay. mean, you could try it, but I mean, yeah. there's only four yeah. dates in the whole thing. And this is a lot of dressing, guys. There, I mean, we're talking four dates for the whole thing. I think it would be very very sour you're really going to have to like lemon if you make it without any kind of sweetener and most salad dressings do have sugar oil and salt so look at this i've got two beautiful bottles of dressing i'm going to yeah. pop these in the refrigerator and i already have a whole bottle of it in my refrigerator uh -huh. and um, what's nice is it keeps for a very very long time i never wait until this one is empty before i make the next one and one of the things I always have in my refrigerator is a nice chopped salad, which Charles does every week for me with all my power greens, carrots, cabbage, uh, two kinds of cabbage, purple and green, and he chops it really fine. And one of the things I love in this dressing, but see, Charles doesn't, so I can't put it in because he doesn't like spicy things, is jalapeno. So I get jalapeno powder. You can get it at Costco. I have it in my Amazon store. And I love that in the lemon poppy seed dressing, but I don't do that for him. Uh, the recipe that I didn't make because it's this Wednesday's Weight Loss Wednesdays, this might be the most popular recipe from Own Your Health. These are the famous jam bars. So you can get, so if you have the book, you already have the recipe, but I'll also do a video coming up on Wednesday to show it. But I almost did this one, but anyway, I didn't. So there we go. And now what's next? Oh, um, I'm gonna just, mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. Uh, of course, you you pitted the dates. You never put the dates with the pit in place. Correct. Correct. Uh, Always then, pinch them in your finger right. to make sure that they're pitted. And then uh, did you use fresh lemon juice or does it matter? Um, you know what? I'll be honest. Fresh is always best. I'm, I am honestly one of the laziest chefs in the world. I did use bottled. It was organic. I got it at Sprouts. I think Santa Cruz was the, the thing. Now we have we have some neighbors with lemon trees that when they bring us fresh lemons, we definitely use the fresh. And when you're using fresh, you can also use the zest. But usually, honestly, I just do it as quick as I can, and I'm using the the bottle, and it, and it comes out fine, honestly. So this is what Charles has for breakfast every day after he has his greens. And these are overnight oats. And this is literally, honestly, if you can remember the number two, this is one of the easiest recipes you'll ever make because it's basically two of everything. Uh, whether it's teaspoon or cups, of course, you'll have to know that, but you probably could figure it out. And what's nice about this is you can always change the fruit to your liking. So I have in this bowl, two cups of my gluten-free oats. These are the rolled oats. I have two teaspoons of chia seeds and two teaspoons of cinnamon, two, two, two. To that, I'm going to add two cups of fruit. And that happens to be half a 16 ounce bag of frozen fruit. I like these little wild blueberries. Hopefully Charles does too, because they're so tiny. It's like you get more fruit in every bite. Now, sometimes we do this with cherries, but cherries are so big, it seems like he's getting chintzed on his fruit. So we're going to add two cups of liquid to this. And this honestly could be just water. So like if you were traveling, you could make this in your hotel room. But Charles likes things a little bit sweeter. So I'm going to be doing one cup of the non-dairy milk that I just made. And I'm going to be putting one cup of unsweetened apple juice in. Now for me, that makes it way too sweet like a dessert. But this is exactly how he likes it. So I have an unfiltered organic apple juice from Trader Joe's. And again, it doesn't matter what the two cups of liquid are. I think if you did two cups of juice, it would probably be almost sickly sweet, but apple juice is not all that sweet. And so then you just mix it together. And what happens is the chia seeds magically thicken overnight. So this becomes like a pudding. Now it's not going to thicken right now before your eyes. I love using these frozen berries because it makes the whole thing purple. And being my favorite color, everything tastes better in purple. Our next dish, our entree is going to be largely purple too. And I can just keep it in the fridge. Now for Charles, this is going to be two days worth of breakfast. So you can do several days in advance. 
But for him, this would be two servings. I, I think for me, it might be three or four if I did eat it. But it's, for me, it's this is not what I would have for breakfast. It's just too sweet for me. So I can leave it in that jar. Or if I wanted to, I could transfer it to this jar. You can get these everywhere. Whoa, whoa. Anyway, you get the idea. But that's so easy. So we're going to just let that set up in the refrigerator. Yeah, this is a funnel just to make it a little easier. And then we're going to walk over to the stove where I'm going to actually cook something that will end up being our dinner tonight. And that's called zucchini saute. So that's in your book as well. And we're going to head over to the stove. And I'm going to teach you. Oh, wait, before we head to the stove, I did do my shop, my shopping, my chopping in advance. I just want to show you this cool little tool. Uh, would you mind lowering it just a tad? I, I did this in advance because it's kind of boring watching people chop. But what I love about this tool is this Vidalia Chop Wizard. First of all, it's got the measurements on the side. But I've never enjoyed chopping onions. It makes me cry. I did this with the zucchini as well. It, it's just so easy to get perfectly exact same size onions every time. I love this tool. It is it's about $20 at the store or at Amazon. And what's nice is, like I said, you get you get regularly shaped pieces. It, it's not irregular. So we're going uh, to show you one other tool before we go, just because it's easier to do it over here. This is my other favorite kitchen tool, the Tupperware. Uh, I don't know what it's called, mini chopper. So lots of, my recipe called for like four cloves of garlic. So for me, that's probably like 16. I always do a lot more garlic. What's nice about this is you just pull the string and it, it makes such finely chopped garlic, like the kind you buy already made in the store. I could never do that as good with my, the knife. And I like it better than a tool that a lot of people use, which is called the garlic press. We used this the other day, and this is so hard to clean because it gets stuck in the holes. So this is, I like tools that will make your life, my life easier. And now we'll go over to the stove and we'll show you how to make this. And that is a Tupperware tool. I have it, but I don't remember the name of it. Um, yeah, I, I gave it to you as a present once. I think yeah. it's called the ch something chop. I, I know it's in my Amazon store. Okay. So I just started okay. out. All I did is I turned my oven on. So I'm preheating my pan. This is my pan. This is a Pampered Chef pan that's not sold anymore. It's called the saute pan. It's like a wok. What I love about it is the deep sides it's because when I'm sauteing, things don't fall out. A lot of pans are flat. I am using a nonstick pan. I always tell people use the best that you can afford. If you're not comfortable using nonstick, this is not like Teflon back in the day. They call it hard and in the die steel. I've had this pan for years. There was no chipping. If your pan had chips or something, obviously don't use it. So there are other ways to saute without a nonstick pan. It's just so easy to clean up. You have waterless cookware you can use. You have stainless steel cookware, ceramic cookware. I don't recommend, um, what's it called? Cast iron, because I know Dr. Barnard talks about cast iron and Alzheimer's and you have to season it. So that's the only thing I wouldn't recommend is cast iron. So I would like to heat my pan up first and always have your ingredients not only ready but near you because we're going to be using zucchini, which I use that little machine to cube perfectly. My onion, I'm using the sweet onion. That's my favorite. But if all I had was a red or a white uh, or a yellow onion, I would use that. And I buy my cabbage already shredded because I'm so lazy and I love purple cabbage. So the way you know your pan is ready since we're sauteing without oil is I heat my pan up and then I take just the tiniest bit of water and you can see how the, the, the circle is moving around. It's ready, the little beads. So we don't need any liquid to saute, we, especially we don't need oil. So what I'm gonna do now that my pan's ready is I'm gonna be putting my onions in first. Some people saute their onion and garlic at the same time. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But if you are going to cook your onions a long time, more than a couple of minutes, like because you want to caramelize it, then I recommend adding the garlic later because it, uh, you know, I think, that, I think the garlic can burn. So usually what I do is I just spread them out. And this is what I love about having a pan with sides. And I just kind of let them hang out. Now, I know a lot of people will say, don't brown your onions. There's acrylamides or advanced glycation in plastic. Look, I'm almost 61. I've lived this far. 
without worrying about eating browned onions. I don't eat oil for many, many years. So I do like to brown mine as much as possible. I think they taste better. They, they taste more like caramelized onions and oil. But if that's something that doesn't work for you, then saute them less. It'll still be good, but it won't be as good. So I want to let these hang out. And once these are ready, to my liking, I'm going to add my garlic. And then I'm going to add my other vegetables. Now, the way you work with sauteing without oil, regardless of what pan you're using, is when it seems like it's getting dry or it would burn, then you can add just a tiny bit, like a tablespoon. And that's all you got to do. And, and this, will, this will, I, I actually have, and then I, you know, you can move them around. I actually have a whole video, how to caramelize onions without oil. So we just got to let them hang out. Now, this is something that I did not know until a few weeks ago when I had Chef Darshana Thacker from Forks Over Knives, she said that you can actually do this saute, your onion and garlic, and then freeze it. I mean, that's so brilliant. And then you don't have to every time do this from scratch. So that's something I'm going to definitely start doing. And a lot of times, I'll be honest, I buy the bag of onion from Trader Joe's because I, I hate chopping onions. It always makes me cry. And I've tried the goggles. They were $30. That was a bust. I tried the, the, the lighting the candle, not no. opening my mouth. None of it worked for me. No, none of them worked. So again, you know, we could technically stop now and this would be acceptable. But since I'm the one eating this, I like it really caramelized. Well, um, for the caramelized onions, you have a, you have a video. Yeah, I do have a video. It just it just takes a little bit of time. However, there's another way if you're if you're concerned about you know the high heat or whatever, there's another video where you can caramelize onions in a crock pot and you, you simply slice them and you put it on low for 24 hours and you'll get the same effect. But you got to plan 24 hours ahead of time if you're going to do right. it that way. Right. And it's important that you're adding a little bit at a time, otherwise you get boiled onions. Yeah, exactly. We don't want boiled onions. We just right. just a little bit just to keep the pan and keep things moving. And again, you could use broth if you want, but you know, water's free, so. It, the smell, the smell of the onions. <laughs> you know, when oh. people can't have onion, I don't know how to help them, especially in SOS-free cooking, because you know we've taken away the salt and the oil and the sugar. You take, I can do almost anything except no onion. I, I just don't know how to make cooked food taste good without onion. So you can see they're getting like nice and nice and brown. Oh wow, just the way I like them. I'm gonna go a little longer. Boom. It really doesn't take very long to do this. And, you know, onions like this make a great addition to anything. I mean, on top of plant-based burgers, on top of, you know, any kind of vegetable dish, even a steamed vegetable dish, carrot dogs. I mean, onions onions really make a make things, uh, especially cooked. Raw onions, you know, yeah. that's, not, that's not for everybody. Some people, I know like in True North, they don't allow the onion raw, but they allow it cooked. So you can see how it didn't take that long. This is no. nice, beautiful caramelization on it. And again, I, I could go longer for myself, but since you guys are watching, I'll probably add the garlic now. And and do you have it in medium heat or is it high heat? I have it on high heat because I'm doing a demo. If I wasn't doing a demo and, and I had more time, I'd probably lower it a little. It would take a little longer, but there we go. See, now I'm adding the garlic because we don't want that to burn. Oh, I could lower it a little bit, if you like. I have never had a gas stove until two years ago. My whole life, I only lived in apartments until now. And you know, in general, well, I don't know in general, but in LA, it was only electric. And uh, you know, you get used to cooking a certain way, and in a lot of ways, gas is harder for me because I'm just not used to it. So we'll just keep going with that. Give the garlic a little minute to hang out with the onions. But I mean, this to me, is the base for any dish. And if you want to, you want to add mushrooms now you can, you don't have to, I mean, I would, I would recommend if you're doing one of my baking recipes or the desert bake shake, you might want to follow the recipe exactly. But for a recipe like this, Hey, if you didn't like zucchini, put broccoli in, I don't care, cauliflower. But this idea of just sauteing the onion and garlic first as a base for your dish, ah, uh, delish. So now I'm going to add my zucchini. This is about a pound. And zucchini is a very high water vegetable. It cooks very quickly. And my cabbage. And one of the things I think I love so much about this dish, other than that I love the ingredients, 
is my favorite color is purple and my second favorite color is green. And so we will have this for dinner, like a stir fry, and we'll put it over some kind of grain. I don't know if, it, maybe I'll make millet tonight, maybe rice, I'm not sure. And then it doesn't really need a sauce. I mean, if you wanted a sauce over this, the one I would recommend, and I almost made this today, and I almost probably could, it's, it's called the Thai peanut free sauce. If you haven't tried that, it tastes just like your oh, high fat God. peanut sauce but it's peanut free. So that would be good over this. But honestly, usually I, sometimes Charles puts a little bit of like coconut aminos on his veggie stir fries. I just put like some uh, California balsamic, like maybe like the teriyaki or the smoked hickory. And that's what I like on this. But uh, but I can make the peanut sauce if Charles wants that. But we, we've kind of had that a few times already this week. So I think maybe just plain. But isn't that pretty? I mean, purple and green, they go so good together. And it's basically almost done. You just cook it until it's the way you like it. I don't like my vegetables. I like them al dente. I like them to have a little bite. I don't like them mushy to death. And uh, this is, and this could, if those of you that like know my ultimate weight loss work, this could be breakfast, you know, with uh, not on a starch, but just this could be your first breakfast. And this is very, very delicious. Um, the reason I like purple cabbage better is just because it's prettier. You know, if you did the green cabbage in here, you wouldn't have the look. But there's health wise, it's just, I think it's just as good. And we're pretty much done here. I mean, look at that. Oh, love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. And I might, I might, I might go a little bit less cooking time because remember, I'm going to have this for dinner. So I'm going to have to reheat it. So I don't want to overcook it and even even when i turn this off it's going to continue to cook you know just from the heat of the pan so i'd rather have it less cooked so i'm gonna i'm gonna turn it off right now because like i said it's going to continue to cook and so this will serve charles and i there might be a little bit left not too much um usually we eat the whole thing sometimes there's a small amount left from this but like i said in my world this is two servings and there you have it the beautiful zucchini saute very easy very delicious four ingredients yes it's a beauty to the eye and i'm sure it was a wonderful it tastes yeah. wonderful well, hey thanks. charles why don't you show them what's in my breville just uh because today was a batch cooking day can you guys see what what i cooked today Ooh, look at that look at all my hannah's oh, you can uh, you can you can see that one is missing because that's what i had for lunch was it my favorite, uh, uh, Hannah Yam and broccoli. But here, like in about 30 minutes, I made you guys a day's worth of food, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert or snacks. So right. it doesn't take that long. Um, nope. Someone was asking me today, you know, or telling me how difficult it is to cook and stuff. And it's really, uh, you can make things like this that you can put together later, you know, even, mm -hmm. even those onions and garlic you can put on top of, the, of, of, of mashed potatoes. Absolutely. And you can buy onions already chopped and garlic already chopped. Even everything even already chopped. Right. You know, right exactly. if, if, I mean, obviously, if you've never cooked, any kind of cooking is going to be harder than going through the drive through But if you learn some basic batch cooking techniques, it doesn't have to be hard, especially if you do multiples. I mean, if I had to do this every day, it would be hard. But like my Hannah yams are done for the week now. So with lunch, I just reheat it and steam my broccoli for four minutes and not hard. Well, yeah. I was I was asking Glenn. Oh, look at that! Oh, yeah, yeah, that's mm. just delicious. And it smells even better than it looks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was asking Glenn if he would come in so we could, the three of us could do the the grand finale. But I'm not sure if he can. Okay. I hear Glenn. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, would... hey, well, let me. Uh... Adjust this, okay? That's good. Okay, good. Well, this, I think this is a great way to, you know, AJ, today is the last session of Aww. the book. So you are the, you're the, the grand finale. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for well, making Well, thanks for having us. It's so could, nice of you guys to read the book. Could we, could we do another week on the recipe index or... Um, or the um, about the author page. We could. Or um, there's the copyright page. Glenn doesn't want it to end. 
we, we have... can do the copyright page next oh, week. Right, sure. So you're, you're deserting me now? You're going on to another book? I am, unless you can write a book in a month, okay? okay? You have a month to write a book. Thank you again. So Thank you, Gustavo and AJ. Yes. Thanks. Try the recipes, guys. I think you'll you like them, the ones I made. Uh, AJ, anything you want, you would like to say, uh, uh, invite people to any yeah, of your... Well, well I, I would invite them just this week to, to watch the rest of the summit. It's free, and I think they'll get a lot of value. And, of course, you can find me every day at 11 a.m. Pacific time on YouTube, where I inter and both these guys have been on the show, and I interview lots of really cool people. Okay. And do a lot of cooking demos, lots of cooking demos, too. You do. You do. All right. Well, thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. All you. right. Bye, everybody. Eat, okay, bye. eat well and own your own health. Own your own health and eat your greens. Yep. <laughs> yep. Bye. Bye.